Hi everyone, Mrs. Below here. In this video, I'm going to be going over the proteins notes for the biochemistry unit. So to begin with, like the other ones that we've already talked about so far, um, proteins are also organic molecules, so they are going to contain carbon and hydrogen. And like we saw in... Um, Jesus, there's a, I'm outside and there's a bee. Okay. Um, like we saw in um, carbohydrates, we will see the presence of oxygen and uh, same with the nucleic acids. Uh, there was also oxygen present. We'll see that here too. And then like in the nucleic acids, we saw the presence of nitrogen. We'll see the presence of nitrogen here in proteins. But instead of seeing phosphorus like we saw in the nucleic acids, we're going to see sulfur here. So when we were talking about nucleic acids, we remember PONCH. And remember the carbs only had carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the proteins, how I remember it is PONCH. I'm sorry, SANCH. There we go. The S stands for sulfur. So again, very similar to some of the other macromolecules we've talked about so far. And like we saw with some of the other macromolecules, these have certain endings, suffixes, and beginnings, uh, prefixes. So with carbohydrates, we saw um, them typically ending in um, O's, like glucose, fructose, galactose, and starting maybe with a GLY, like glycogen. Here with proteins, if anything's ending in, ending in ACE, like amylase, lactase, um, first of all, it's probably a protein. And then second of all, usually if it ends in ACE, it's probably some type of an enzyme, which is an example of a protein. Um, it can also end in IN, like pepsin is an example. And then as we can see, it could start with pep. So like pepsin. Um, peptoglycan, those are some other examples of proteins. So if you're looking at a word and you're like, I'm not sure if it's a carb or a protein, try looking at what it's ending in and what the word is beginning in. That could give you a hint. And with macromolecules, again, these are large molecules, macromolecules. That's what that means. Or some people call them biomolecules. We can't see them with our naked eye with the microscope. Um, so typically we're going to use computer programming and 3D images to represent what these look like. Um, so proteins are usually pretty complex. They're pretty large in structure. Um, here's an example here. Um, and then here's another example, not showing all of the specific elements present. Again, kind of a more simplified version, like you saw with the nucleic acids here. Um, so remember the nucleic acids, the nucleotide, this thing right here, is what makes up these larger structures. This larger structure is just a little bit more simplified because it's not showing every single element. And then same thing with our carbs. Here is our um, monomer. Remember the monomer for carbohydrates are monosaccharides. For nucleic acids, they are nucleotides. You know, this image is showing all of the elements, all of the atoms. You know, versus these ones are a lot more simplified. So there's different, different ways to represent these things. So back to proteins. So the monomer for carbs, like I said, was a monosaccharide. The monomer for nucleic acids is a nucleotide. The monomer for proteins, so again, these are building blocks. You put these pieces together to create larger structures. The monomer for proteins are amino acids. Um, if you've ever been to a health food store or have looked at stuff like health related, sometimes you see this come up, like people take amino acids and it's because they're the building blocks of proteins. And for humans, um, we have 20 different 
amino acids. And so it's kind of like what we talked about with nucleic acids here. This is the building block, a nucleotide, um, but there can be some variations. For example, like the sugar could be different because um, there's two types, depending if you're talking about DNA or RNA. And the nitrogen base could be different, depending if you're talking about, again, DNA or RNA. So kind of similar with proteins is they all have this same basic structure. They have a central carbon, so that's the carbon that's at the, in the middle, right? Because this is an organic molecule. We have a hydrogen attached to that, again, organic because there's carbon and hydrogen present. We have what's called a carboxyl group, which is over here. So it has the carbon um, and then two oxygens and a hydrogen attached to it. And then what we have, which makes sense, this is amino acid. It's called an amino group. Um, that's where we're seeing that nitrogen present. And then we can see in this, this is what's different between those 20 different amino acids, kind of like in the nucleotide. Um, and this is typically where you're going to see that sulfur present because we're talking about sanch. So sulfur, um, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. So this is what makes those 20 um, amino acids different from each other is what is attached to them in this R group. And we're not going to go into detail with that, but you just have to know there's 20 different R groups, which means we have 20 different amino acids. Now, this is very similar to what we saw with carbohydrates because um, we have a monosaccharide, we had disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. And saccharide literally means sugar. But here we're talking about proteins. So we're going to see um, the amino acids put together to make something like maybe a dipeptide. A dipeptide, di means two. So that would be two amino acids bonded together. So like in this example here, again, you can see that water being removed. That's your dehydration synthesis. Okay, we're removing that water to create that bond. And the specific name of that bond is a peptide bond. Again, PEP because we're talking about proteins. A legopeptide is a few amino acids bonded together. And then we have what's called a polypeptide, which is many amino acids bonded together, kind of like a monosaccharide or a polysaccharide is many monosaccharides bonded together. And again, here is a more simplified version of that, like we saw with the uh, carbohydrates. This was our simplified diagram. In reality, um, really you do have all of those elements still present again we're just simplifying the diagram and typically this is how we're going to simplify um, proteins it looks like this uh, kind of like beads on a string and so um, typically proteins are very big i mean they're made up of hundreds if not thousands of amino acids super big structures technically once a poly, some people use polypeptide and protein interchangeably. There is a little bit of a technical difference. A polypeptide is a bunch of amino acids. Technically, once that structure folds, okay, to something like this, then it is technically considered a protein, a functioning protein. And proteins do a lot of different things in our bodies, um, one of them being enzymes, which we're going to talk a lot about, and then um, just like a whole host of other things structurally in the body, and then also like other jobs. So remember, when we talked about carbs, they did a lot of other, they did a lot of things too. Obviously, the main function being energy, but then we also saw how it could be uh, stored to be used for later 
and how it was a structural component in plants and in bugs. And with proteins, kind of similarly, um, we, the main function we're going to talk about with proteins, but this isn't, I wouldn't say the main function, we're just going to talk a lot about it, is going to be enzymes. Um, I wouldn't say any of these are like a main function. I would just say that we're focusing on enzymes specifically because they do have a very important job. But proteins, I mean, this is what makes up a lot of your body. And proteins that actually, remember when we talked about nucleic acids? So like the DNA and the RNA, that is what we use to make a protein. So the DNA has the stored genetic information. The RNA carries out protein synthesis, literally making proteins. So nucleic acids actually have the instructions for telling us how to make proteins, which do a lot of things in our body. Yes, you can use proteins as an energy source to make um, ATP. However, your body's always going to go for the carbs first because those are just easier to process. But your body can use proteins as a food source. Um, it's also going to be a huge part in cell structure. And that also includes um, these things here, storage, transport, and signaling, uh, which happens in your cells. We have a whole unit on that next in our cells unit. Your immune system. So like things like antibodies, for example, that's part of your immune system. Uh, muscles, of course, we know are made up of protein. So that's a structural component. Actin and myosin, those both end in in. Those are the two main proteins that make up your muscles. And then also hormones fall into this um, category as well which play a huge role in um, regulating your body as well. So in the next video, I'm going to go over enzymes more in detail, um, just because those are super critical in your body. But the rest of these things, um, like the cell-related stuff, we'll get more in-depth with that in our next unit.